everybody got some of the point. That's the graduation song. And uh, this was Ajahn Nisibo's uh, mother's and probably father's idea. Hope I haven't outed you too much. Uh, but yeah, the most exciting part of today, well, probably I just have everybody here, um, but especially all of us are here, many of us are here um, who wouldn't normally be here uh, to celebrate Ajahn Nisibo's becoming an Ajahn. So um, yeah, basically in the Thai forest tradition, uh, in our uh, tradition, we have these different prefixes, these titles, which we affix to the beginning of a name of a monk. So we get our monk name when we first ordain as a samanera, as a novice, and then we're called Tan, 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 or you know, some people might say Tan, 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 which is basically, it means venerable. It's like a Thai version of a Pali version of venerable. And then you stay in robes and um, just live around a monastery and do whatever that entails for about 10 years. Um, and when you reach 10 years in robes, which pretty much, uh, you know, we've got two or three more days before the official date of the end of the, the Vasa or the Rains Retreat when it's, you know, officially, according to some measures, uh, that somebody becomes an Ajahn. But I think we can all basically start calling Ajahn Nisibo Ajahn now. And Ajahn means teacher, and he's definitely a teacher and uh, a very venerable friend and good influence and good role model for, um, yeah, I think all of us. So uh, in celebration of uh, this, someone called it the Ascension, which is uh, you know, on Ascension Day. Um, um, yeah, maybe we won't call it that. But, um, <laughs> but now he's an Ajahn. So maybe all of us, before we continue, we can just say, Sadhu. And that just means, hooray, yes, <laughs> great, great. And we'll pass the mic off to Kim, um, actually. Hello friends. So we are going to have a time now for um, community sharing and reflections. So um, if you uh, want to share, you can raise your hand and the mic will be brought around for you. And we're thinking that we would just share, um, if you feel drawn to a little about what Clear Mountain has meant to you and to your practice specifically. Um, and we're thinking that we'll keep the sharing to about five minutes per person. And um, Amanda, I believe, is going to be the timekeeper for us. So if you are getting to four minutes, she's going to give you a lovely um, chime of the bell just to let you know that you are getting close to your time. Just so that as many people as would like will have time to share. And if you are not a sharing in public sort of person, um, on the back table near the books, there's a community reflection board. And there are note cards with really adorable Clear Mountain logo stickers um, and little pins. And you can just write your reflections on there. Um, you can do both. You can share out loud and write a reflection as well. And we'll do that until, I think, around 10.40. Um, so we've got a bit of time. And um, after that, we will have our potluck celebration and time of community as well. And as I was thinking about this, um, what Clear Mountain has meant to me, a little closer, yeah. OK, great. And please, when you share, hold the mic close to your mouth. <laughs> Um, yes, and um, if you are joining us on Zoom as well, um, you can share um, as well. We'd love to have you share. You can either, um, I believe they can unmute, right? No. I'm hearing no. 
Yeah. Or you can type it in and we will read it aloud for you as well. Yeah. Um, and as I was thinking about it, this sentence came up really clearly for me that Clear Mountain feels like it feels like the dearest wish of my heart was made manifest in the world. Really, truly, this community is a dream come true for me. And I'm so, so grateful for it. So if you would like to share, I don't know who's running the mic, actually. Katie is, yes, awesome. So just um, raise your hand and let's have a time of sharing. Good morning. My name is Juanita, and this is my husband named Jeff. We drove from Olympia to here every week, one and a half hour, and one and a half to return. That says something. So I come to America to take care of his mother, 92 years old now. Beside that, I really feel like I need the community. I have to build this community to be the community that I like it to be safe, friendly, compassionate. So when I joined this, when I met Tan uh, Ajahn Nisapo first time, August 14, last year. So I said, this is it. And I told my husband, said, besides take care of your mom, this is my priority of living here. So don't complain. <laughs> <laughs> don't complain if I go to Seattle, ask you to drive me to go to Seattle every week. To have the community and practice is very important for me. I have been living away from Thailand for so long and I'm thirst for this, the community. And after I met Ajani Sapo and friends, Dhamma friend here, my practice very improved. I really want to, want to practice, want to follow the path of the Buddha very seriously. Even when I was young, my mom was none, but I still doesn't feel this way before. So come to together like this, and I feel so safe. You know, come to America, come to Seattle. People thought, oh, this, this is non, this is so, so full of the crime and things like that. But here in this place, I don't feel that way. So I leave the pack every year, but I never feel of, of somebody took my bag or purse or anything like that. So this feeling is very uh, something that we can build ourselves. And I really believe that to lead, to show that uh, we can happy wherever we are, and to be calm and cool for people who are around us who doesn't feel that way, that we can show the way of the practice, like in Thailand, Thai language is called you hai pin. <laughs> That's what I really think. So it really mean to me. And when when we first got here and we found out in the, the, the website of the dana, of the offer the meals, some meal, sometimes Tanachan doesn't have anybody to to offer the meals. We very worried and I Ask my friend, let's do this. Let's really, really get together to do that. And I'm so glad that I, 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 I talked to my friend all about this and so glad that I can do that. The joy that comes from giving and joy to meet these people here is so, is so, is so blessed. So um, I would like to say something in Thai language to Tanachani Sapo. Can you translate it? กราบนมัสการท่านอาจารย์นิสาโพเนื่องในโอกาสครบรอบ 10 
ขออํานาจคุณพระศรีรัตนตรัยและกุศลจิตของท่านอาจารย์จงอํานวยพรให้ท่านมีความสุขภาพร่างกายสมบูรณ์มีกําลังใจและกําลังกายที่เข้มแข็งเป็นกําลังใจในการเผยแพร่พระธรรมที่ถูกต้องของสมเด็จพระพุทธสัมมาสัมพุทธเจ้าให้ขยายสู่กลุ่มชนที่สนใจในการฝึกฝนปฏิบัติตนเพื่อพ้นทุกข์ตลอดกาลและนานเทินขอบารมีธรรมที่ท่านได้สั่งสมมาดนบันดาลให้โครงการเคลียร์เมาชันโมนสรีประสบผลสำเร็จในเรวันนี้ด้วยเทินสาธุ and the English English a little bit we would we would we would like to take this opportunity to offer our heartfelt congratulations to t a n a j a n i s a p o on your t e n w a n s a We also thanks you for your uh, guide and inspiration and compassionate effort to show us the way. Thank you. Everybody hear me? Yeah, I can add a little bit. So, yeah, I began to get interested in Dharma when I went to Asia the first time in about 1981. I was there for a year and a half traveling. Later, I taught English in Thailand and lived there for about six years. And during that time, I got really serious. Been to uh, several. Meditation retreats, and that was going really well. But at that time, Thailand was a poor country, and my salary was very low. <laughs> so we we decided to move to Japan, which many people see as a Buddhist country. But we were surprised when we got there that religion is very seldom seen. Really, it's it's just going through the motions in. In Japan, so almost nobody is interested in something like uh, meditation or anything about Dharma. They don't even know what it is. So we were there for almost 30 years and just came back last year, and then discovered this place. So it's it's since then my my interest and my um, practice in meditation and with this whole community. It was like a new discovery after a 30-year hibernation. <laughs> my my uh, practice has re been renewed, so I'm really grateful for that. Grateful for that. Hello. So my name is Miles, but I actually have a card here from our lovely friend uh, Daniel, who I think almost everyone here should know. Um, and I'm going to read that for him. He's currently away at a Goenka retreat. So uh, it says, "Clear Mountain has been my first look at what it's like to have a community. I've spent many years wishing for one, but never quite fitting." Looking back, the fact that I had to wait for this has mean, oh, meaning because I don't know that I would have found one as wholesome as Clear Mountain then. This is the first time I've had any sense of belonging, and I'm so grateful that it's with good people. We are blessed, Daniel. And I figure while I have the microphone, I might as well say something too. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I, my first encounter with Clear Mountain and Ajahn Nisapo was at the potluck in Magnuson Park, the, uh, the kickoff of the aspiration. And, um, it was the second time that I'd ever met a monk. I met a monk for the first time at a Goenka retreat who was on retreat and it was lovely. I got to serve him and speak with him a little bit, but this is really the first time or that was the first time that I'd had the opportunity to um, get to know a monastic in a 
more long term sense, and um, it's been really incredible, you know, to say the least. And um, Ajahn Nisipo has just been incredibly encouraging um, in encouraging us to explore the Dhamma more and more um, and inspiring in how he conducts himself. Um, at this point, I just got done traveling a few months up and down the coast to different monasteries. And um, yeah, I, I still find myself being, you know, awestruck by the brightness of this whole community um, led by, you know, Ajahn Kovilo and Ajahn Nisapo. And um, it's just meant, I mean, this is, this is my home, home base at this point, you know, and um, I, yeah, before I got involved with Clear Mountain, I was just sort of blowing in the wind this way and that way and not knowing what the heck I was doing and um, trying to meditate, but not really having a community. And so this has just been really, uh, yeah, home base, kind of my, the, the place that I know I can come back to and, and really uh, feel nourished and cared for. And so, thank you. Um, I think for me and for, I think a lot of people, especially around my age, um, like we, or I interested in Buddhism like more seriously during 2020 and the pandemic because because um, the suffering at that point was pretty hard to ignore um, in quarantine. Um, but I first sort of try it. Buddhism was like pretty difficult not having a community um, just listening to podcasts, it's really hard to keep a practice alive, um, practicing on your own. So I moved to Seattle and um, just from word of mouth happens to find this community really early on moving here. And um, it's just been such a lovely support um, with um, just the encouragement and realizing that um, all of us are kind of learning and struggling with at the core a lot of the same things um, and uh, especially the focus on uh, metta and loving kindness and compassion has like really um, had a profound effect on my day-to-day -day life um, and I'm just extremely grateful um, to Ajahn Nisbo and Ajahn Kavilo. Hi, Angela. So nice to see everyone again. Um, I met Ajahn Nisbo about four years ago at Empty Cloud Monastery on the East Coast. And ever since then, uh, Clear Mountain and Ajahn Nisibo have been such a huge source of brightness in my life, uh, no matter what craziness is going on um, or how chaotic my mind is. I'm always able to come back here for a live stream or, you know, just fly over to Seattle casually and find some peace. <laughs> and um, I think a lot of people who suffer from perfectionism uh, there's a tendency to get down on yourself in your practice and be very harsh internally and start thinking, what am I doing wrong? And, um, you know, I need to be stricter with myself. Um, so it's so nice to have a place of refuge um, with two Ajans who are so unconditionally kind and have a way of sort of artfully tying everything back to the Dhamma. Um, and I know there, I've had several moments in my practice where uh, Ajahn Nisibo will create a metaphor um, and it will suddenly click for me that, okay, 
I suddenly understand this Dhamma concept that I've been struggling with for years. Um, so that has been such a gift. Um, in a separate time when I was at Empty Cloud Monastery on a retreat, um, I was staying up late to watch Ajahn Misubo's talk um, live streamed here, which was 9 p.m. on the East Coast. So everyone else was asleep. Um, and that's when I started realizing that um, there was a flood coming in in the empty cloud basement. <laughs> and I was able to wake everyone up and sort of uh, Ayasoma, Bhante Sudaso, and I were able to sort of rescue the monastery <laughs> and go into uh, emergency mode. Um, but I think that's an example of um, how these two Ajans are such a great influence on the world. Um, and even when they aren't realizing it, <laughs> and are such a savior to people, um, including Clear Mountain's basement, probably. <laughs> Good morning, all. I'm Frank. I've talked to a number of you, but not nearly all. <laughs> so I originally sort of stumbled on Buddhism back in high school two plus decades ago. And from that time, my personal practice has been more Mahayana than anything else, Zen and Tibetan Buddhism. But when I found Clare Mountain, I knew I had found something truly special. This community is such a, to me, shining example of what Sangha is meant to be. be a place where everyone really cares about each other and we all sort of support the practice of the community and everyone around us. And I think that is a real testament to what, the, what our beloved Ajans have built. And so I just wanted to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you, Venerables, for everything you do. This has meant a lot. Good morning. I'm trying to figure out how to say what this place and these people have meant to me. I think it's very simple. I came from a very mixed background and I come with very real awareness of limitations on the ways that I connect with different people. But I came here for a simple reason, and that was to find support in my own discipline in my practice. Both my formal practice and my informal practice, minute to minute, day to day. And I have found in this community and in its welcome and in its example, the kind of discipline that I looked for. I did not meditate daily before, and I do now. And I, I treasure what both my practice formal and informal, um, have allowed to happen in my life, in my relationships with people, in my relationship with my wife, in my relationship with friends, some of whom are suffering right now terribly, and in my ability to freely be accessible to them. And. Um, I credit a great deal of what this community has given to me to these two monks who are leading it. Their style, their openness, their clarity, 
the love that they show as they deal with us. And I know that many of the people here brought a great deal of love in who they were when they came. They didn't get it all from these leaders, but these leaders foster it and help show us how to display it to each other. So I'm grateful to all of you. Congratulations, everybody here. Congratulations, every people who member of the Kiyomatsu Monastery and the community here. We had followed the right person. Supatipano, Pakawato, Sawaka Sanko, Hanajan, Musapo. He is like a little light to show the way. It's just like Buddha. He found this fact of life. He, he just show us the way to go. He always say, do not believe me. Just practice, think yourself. He doesn't only practice, but he's showing, he's teaching us. He lead us to the way so congratulations everybody here. You come in the right you come to the right way. This is quite an occasion, thank you. Um, I am Carl and uh, I would like to share my admiration for Ajahn uh, Nisabo. Um, from the perspective that the um, of the Buddhist lineage, um, it's lasted 2,600 years to a large extent because of the rigor of how the transmission happens, and uh, carefulness is um, a watchword of that that lineage, and um, I think what. The administrative skills that Khan Nisabo has shown in weaving through that lineage with respect and uh, heartfelt love uh, is incredible. And what has happened here is just as incredible. And I, I thank you for all your skill set. Uh, hi there, my name is Steve, and uh, I'm going to follow on what Carl said a little bit, you know, here in the early 21st century. Um, things are difficult, pain around the world, climate change is looming, so when we look out a decade or two from now, circumstances may be worse. And the bright light of the Dhamma and the way it's being held by these two Ajans and the vision of Clear Mountain to create a place where people can practice and know that there's a purity of Dharma, a bright light, a line straight back to the Buddha, I think is of enormous importance for the wider community in ways we can hardly visualize sitting here right now. So I think what's being created is amazingly important. And, you know, the life of the Buddha during the life of the Buddha, there were coup d'etats, there was serial killers, there was warfare, and the Dharma in its purity sprang from that. So it can also continue to happen here in the bizarreness of 2022. And I guess the last thing I say is um, the the bright the the, the 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 pure container of the Vinaya of the monastic form in the middle of a time when so many leaders are compromised ethically, whether spiritual or secular, is incredibly important. And these two, you know, I've gotten to know them pretty well and they hold the Vinaya so perfectly, so purely, and so that, that these are the rules of the monastics, for those of you who don't know, 
that is a container that makes us alive. So I really want to bow to how they approach this and uh, any one of you and, and all of your contributions in every way is very important for people you'll never meet. So this is like looking ahead to beings that we have not yet seen and for young people, so cool having young people, people that we haven't seen yet. So bow to all of that. If anyone online has anything, if you just want to raise your hand, that's how I would know to pass it off to you. But otherwise, I won't know. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, I just want, my name's Teresa. And um, I've been attending since we began in the park. Um, and I just have to express my gratitude and appreciation for what this community and what this leadership um, has meant to me. And um, it's just an example of, um, through your leadership and example, um, Ajahn Nisabo, is just an example of authenticity, discernment, such a gentle way to approach this path. Um, I arrived practicing meditation um, and with another group, but just still so ignorant about this practice. Um, and it's, it's offered this lesson of being on this path in such a gentle way, and has really seen me through some incredibly difficult personal times. And um, so the last thing I wanna share is that people in my life, when, um, they're encountering me and maybe I'm not showing up as my best self. Um, they're consistent, whether it's my family or, um, or friends. Um, what they often ask is, um, how's that meditation group? How long has it been since you've um, been there and how's your practice? And um, so that's just been such helpful feedback and um, it's really um, made me aware of the impact it has on me and how I move through the world. So thank you so much for that. Hi, I'm Sandra. Um, I just wanted to say that I, um, I, I, you are uh, my Dhamma gate, Ajahn Nisabo. Uh, I heard that term the first meeting I went to uh, back in January, um, and it was said about someone um, that had passed away, a, a great teacher, I guess, that had passed away, and um, I, I just want to express my gratitude for the space uh, that you hold, and this, I see it as a sacrifice. I know Ajans, both of you, this life is not easy. And you hold, you've chosen this path uh, and sacrificed over all these years so that I could eventually find this teaching. And I am so incredibly grateful for that. Um, I'm, I'm a, a baby in all of this process, but the, the, the way that you communicate the Dhamma uh, I can hear it, and uh, I, I, f I feel at home, and and just keep wanting to learn. So thank you. Oh. Amy, uh, can can you start speaking? Uh, we can give it to you now, online. Thank you. Oh my goodness, are you talking to me? Can she not? Oh wait, are you unmuted? Yeah, she is unmuted. 
Can you say something? Yes. Can you hear me? He's speaking, but nothing's coming out. From the speakers. speakers. Can you try again? Yes. Hello, everyone. Okay, now we can hear you. Thank you. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> the funny thing is, I didn't put up my hand. I was waving, oh. <laughs> but I I think it's um. <laughs> I, I will take this opportunity. Um, I just am. I I want to speak up for those of us who participate regularly on a virtual basis as well and chime in to everything that has been said. Um, you know, even at a distance like this, it's really incredible how everything you've mentioned, the uh, the love and the example and the guidance, the leadership um, and the modeling. It really like when someone said, you know, that both, um, excuse me, um, that both the agents, um, not only teach us, but they model the way to live the Dhamma with their metta and gentleness and guidance. Um, I can't say enough how incredible and it is that that is able to be transmitted over all these like copper wires um, thousands of miles away and even into a different country. I don't even live in the US and I feel like this place is been the, one of the most beautiful communities I've ever been a part of. And I'm so grateful. And I feel just as much a part of the family being thousands of miles away. And I think I'll just leave it at that. And, and, and not just the adjuncts, like I've met so many of you in the community and you're so wonderful, such Kalyana Mitas. I really feel so much love for all of you. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Hi, I'm Jean, and <clears throat> I feel such a deep gratitude that Monk showed up in Seattle. <laughs> um, I used to have to travel to Aigiri or somewhere, you know, to find this this uh, depth of practice, and it landed in Seattle, and it's just amazing. Um, and I also have to say, from the perspective of the mother of another monk. The first time I brought alms downtown to Tan Isabo, I felt like I was offering it to my son. And so I still feel very motherly <laughs> toward Ajahn Nisipo. But um, yeah, it's uh, been such a privilege. And we've watched you grow over this last year and a half. Um, and I just wish that, you know, all the paramis keep growing in you and this community supports you. And it's going to be beautiful what's created here. It, it is already, but the future will be lovely, I'm sure. Um, thank you. Hi everybody. Um, this is a this is something from Glenn Hughes, um, who's online. Um, congratulations, Ajahn Nisabo. Thank you for your life and your practice and your teaching. The blessings you brought to this world through your wise and skilled actions and understanding will ripple on forever. And I'm so grateful to be a recipient of that goodness. Directly through you, as well as through this community and refuge. Deepest thanks and blessings to you, precious one. Beautiful. 
And uh, while I have the mic, I'd also like to, uh, I'm new, I'm, I've been here maybe a month and a half or so, but I, my name is Cheryl and I, I appreciate the meta, I appreciate, I appreciate the community, I, I, um, I feel very blessed that we have, that we have so many, so many opportunities in Seattle to practice, um, and I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Yeah, since I've uh, gotten to know our monastics, I've, I've, it's just been quite inspiring um, that uh, to see how they live. Uh, I've seen their cooties uh, in, in a backyard and, and how they own virtually nothing and sleep on the floor and uh, it's just been incredible to see a, a lifestyle that, uh, you know, it, it shows what's possible and how how much you can let go of suffering in the uh, the worldly concerns, the worldly wins, um, which, you know, even if we find it overwhelming to see that uh, at times, uh, it's just a it's a direction. And I, I just find that so inspiring uh, and helpful. And uh, both our monastics have, have been so kind and gentle and, and patient. And, and patience is something that uh, I think that's a true test in today's world that, and something very rare. And uh, uh, they've been extremely patient with me. <laughs> and... Um, as I've been helping out a little bit here and there, um, I've gotten to uh, to know them, and 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 they, you know, what you see is what you get. Uh, our monastics are are not fake; they're the real deal here, and there's great value in learning from them uh, because of that. You know, there's this is a real opportunity, and um, I've jumped into the opportunity to, you know. To learn more and 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 just it's oh gosh it's just been so interesting and so um, uh, amazingly helpful and, and this community too uh, I got to tell you like people will really help you out here like really help you out and like I, I've uh, <laughs> I've been I've I've been going through some stuff and and people are just jumping in and and lending a hand where when it's needed and 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 where it's needed you know uh, in terms of like um, aspects of my life that uh i've just been needing some help so I, I i just so appreciate that from from everyone um thank you and and congratulations on becoming an ajahn uh i think it's wonderful and i I, I couldn't wait for this uh, celebration for this for this day. And I'm, I'm very uh, filled with gratitude for you. Well, I think we have like one minute, and I was wondering if I could just say a couple <laughs> words, <laughs> um, and then I'll make it brief. But um, I think it's kind of fun because it was about a year ago, almost to the almost to the day that I left to go down to California and go to monasteries. And I just remember very fondly um, going to talk to Ajahn Nisabo and the community at Macrina in the morning. And it was just, I was just going to take two weeks and go to Aloka Vihara. And Ajahn Nisabo was like, well, have you thought about going longer? Like, I don't remember the exact words, but he was like, there's this place by Aguirre, like, I bet they'll, they'll let you in, like I can email them for you. And so the next day um, I emailed them. I think Ajani Sabo put in a good word for me. And that Monday I quit my job. <laughs> I put in my notice and I ended up being gone for, for many months. And um, yeah, not only that journey, but just this community. These are the best, like deepest, most beautiful friendships I've ever had. 
um, I've learned so much more about than just meditation, you know, uh, just more about Sila and about Donna, you know, going to weekly alms as often as I can. And it's just affected me in such a deep way. I don't even really know how to describe it. But there's just this feeling of contentment in my life that I've never had before. And just this feeling, I think that many people have talked about this feeling, a sense of safety and that um the people in this community will be here for me through all my joys and through all my sorrows, and they already have been. So it's just really, really amazing. And I cannot wait um, to continue to be here with all of you and to one day have a physical monastery. It's such a dream, um, especially having lived here in Seattle for 12 years, to, to be here and also have the Dhamma be so present and, and have monastics like Ajahn Kobilo and Ajahn Misabo. So, yeah. That's all. <laughs> um, you guys love some Tan Ajahn Misabo. <laughs> it's impressive. Yeah, but so do I. And he's a great, uh, great brother. We uh, live very close to each other. In the past three days, we've spent two nights at least, like in the same room. And he's an impressive monk. I mean, in many ways, and you all have seen some of that, but like we live close. And when you live close to somebody, like you have a chance to see like all the gross parts and stuff. Um, and but he's he's great in many ways. I mean, if I if I was sitting where he is getting this much praise, like my head would literally be exploded. Like it would just be a body with no head, uh, perhaps. But yeah, I mean, I try to, I really do like praising people and Ajahn Nispo is my best, my best brother in certain ways, in many ways. Yeah. And uh, I try to throw praise at him a lot and he's really good at just like dodging the, the praise. So. Um, and he's tough, and he's soft, and uh, he's really tough. I mean, you guys don't know. He, he wakes up and goes swimming in the ocean at like 2 a.m. or before or after. The ocean. Um, <laughs> and if there's no ocean around, he'll like take a cold shower. And uh, yeah, he's impressive in front of people and behind people's backs. And uh, yeah, just a, a lovely monk. And of course, we're we're all human, but uh, his intentions and uh, yeah, there's no way I wouldn't have tried to start a community. I would, I'm pretty content just sitting in my hunt, hut and doing you know my own monk thing, you know. Um, but being invited here and being able to tap in to the extent that I have, I, I really love it. And uh, both of us have intentions to stay monks, may it be for the the rest of our lives. And you know, this Clear Mountain Monastery project is a really yeah, we want it to be around for decades and decades and yeah, you know, over as long as as long as possible, you know. So yeah, we've known each other for about a dozen years now. And uh, he impressed me from day one. He came and visited Abayagiri when I was the chores monk. We have different positions at monasteries. You'd be like the chores monk or the work monk or the guest monk or the, unfortunately, sometimes we have an IT monk. That's kind of a depressing role. But at that time, I was the chores monk, and I didn't know him. This guy, actually, you've lost some weight, actually, since you ordained. Uh, but he came, and this guy, I'd never seen him before, and he comes, and uh, I have to give him this half-hour chore. And usually it's just a chore to keep people, you know, we want people to practice mindfulness, also to practice mindfulness in daily life, uh, and also, you know, half an hour to keep him out of trouble, you know, for that amount of time. And I just give him this job to basically just start sweeping the path and just keep going, you know. And uh, I gave him that job and then set him off and I kind of forgot about him for several days. And you just keep hearing like from some of the monks like, God, who's who's sweeping the trail? They're doing a really good job. And the next I got, yeah, they got up to my kuti too. Like who's, who's doing this? And uh, figured out that it was, yeah, Ajahn, now Ajahn Nisabo doing this incredible job of sweeping. And uh, yeah, I think all of us were really impressed because, you know, come to a monastery and 
you know, you come to meditate and, you know, some monk gives you this job to do something and you basically just do, you know, as minimal as you can to make people think that you're working to some extent. But Machin Espo really went full out on that, uh, that trail. And really, he does do that in many aspects of his life. And it's a really good influence for me. And uh, it seems like it's a good influence for other people as well. And uh, we have two people in particular to thank for our Ajahn. And uh, I believe that is his parents. So pass the mic. Dave's had to live the last five days with me. He's used to it. So I wanted to come up so I could face the Sangha. Um, I've been a fan of uh, Nispo for the last almost 34 years. And also one of the unique things about Ajahn Kovilo is um, I feel like I've been a fan of his for about as long, even though I've only known him for a few years. Um, but to know them is to uh, really sense something deeper than your normal uh, way that you know people. But when I talk to people about what's going on here, it's the Sangha that I come back to and the community. And it's just such um, a lovely, unique opportunity to have uh, this group of people that are safe, that are really, really sincere practitioners, and um, that we can feel a part of. So we're not, we don't live in Seattle. We're not here that often yet. <laughs> She'll talk about that. <laughs> but anyways, um, just want to, uh, it's, it's the Sangha. It's such a special thing. And you all are so special. And um, I just want to really thank you all for what you bring to this. My daughter said, you're not going to have to bow to him now, are you? <laughs> so I'm gonna do it. <laughs> she said, it's not fair. You're going to you're gonna have to bow to me. And then Doug said, we've been bowing to you since the day you were born. <laughs> um, I just wanted to add a few words, too, that, uh, you know, the Buddha said to Ananda, the spiritual, spiritual friendship is the whole path, the whole path. And here, here it is. And the way you support each other and the, the welcome you've given Doug and I and um, the dear friends that I hardly know but I feel like I know and look forward to uh, being with later and onward and onward. We hope we, uh, we do hope we can live close to the monastery and to you. Um, and uh, I, I don't, I'm not sure what else to say. It's it's a, a blessing beyond words to have, um, you know, your own spiritual practice, to have your son in, embody the spiritual practice that you yourself follow, and to be such a beautiful example of it. Um, I know the word mom, M-O-M, means mother of monk. Um, <laughs> and... Um, there's a saying that behind every uh, successful child is an astonished parent, and this parent continues to be astonished all the time. And uh, um, yeah, it's beyond. It's I thank you, and uh, my son is also my teacher, and you are also my teachers, all of you. And I thank you for your support.
And we're sorry we won't, we won't be there in Thailand with you. That was a little too much for these, for us to go. We were in Mexico with our daughter in November, and it just seemed like too much to go to Thailand the next month. <laughs> next time, we would love to be on the pilgrimage with you. Oh, <clears throat> I want to say a special, a very special thanks to Alice well said, keeping an eye on on uh, so many aspects of his life, and uh, um, she doesn't make it look like it, but it, it 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 there's a lot of there's a lot of attending. Um, I don't know if there's a Thai word for a mother a mother like the monastery mother. May all, <laughs> but uh, it's. No small thing what Dave and Allison have done by hosting uh, Nisa Bo in their backyard. <laughs> um, we are doing amazing on this schedule, I have to say. <laughs> um, I'm I just, uh, like this? Okay. Um, yeah, I'll just, uh, everything that's been said, ditto. <laughs> Agree. Um, it's home, and this community is, uh, it's just my heart. Um, I didn't know that I was missing something, and it just popped up, and I'm forever grateful for it. Um, and I look forward to the coming years. So, yeah, yeah, it's home. It's home. Um, that's what I'll say. But now, um, uh, we have um, the community uh, did come together to um, um, with some um, helpful guidance of Ajahn Kowilo. <laughs> um, what do you get a monk? For a gift, <laughs> um, you know, um, and yeah, the community pulled together, and we have a gift that we'd like to offer you, Ajahn Lisa Bo. So, and Miles is going to do that on behalf of um, the community, and I believe Juanita has something as well. 